Now we're going to develop the energy balance for control volumes. This is our first law equation when we're looking at control volumes where we've got this flow. So again, we've got some mass flow coming in, some mass flow going out. Okay, you could have some Q, you could have some W, you know, heat and work, all this sort of thing. But again, our system is that control volume uh, that I uh, represented by the, 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 the dash line there. Now, there's actually two types of work in a control volume. The first is the work of the control volume. You may have a spinning blade or, or something along those lines. We have that work. Basically, that's kind of the work output. We also have some work just due to the fact that I've got this fluid flow. Okay, so if you think about what's going on uh, at the exit, right, basically that control volume is pushing it out, right, um, through a pressure, pushing it out. Basically, it's doing work on the surroundings, whereas what's coming in is doing work on the control volume, right? And that power that we're looking at is force times velocity, where force is pressure times the area of the inlet and exit area, right? So if I take pressure times an area, I get force. Force times velocity is power. So I've got this power that the control, the control volume is pushing out, and then it's getting work done on it as well by what's coming in. And that's, again, pressure times area times volume. Now, that area times velocity is the volumetric flow. And we can relate that volumetric flow from our discussion on the mass flow to the mass flow given by this. So rather than having uh, area times velocity, I have mass flow times the specific volume. So reordering that, instead of using that, I'm going to have this P times V, which was what we're calling flow work, again, times our, our mass flow. So that's a flow work, which is separate from the work that's being done by spinning a blade or something like that. Okay, including this flow work into our first law energy balance equation. Okay, this is basically again a time derivative of our first law equation. So the change in energy with respect to time, again, is rate of heat transfer minus the rate of the work. Again, this is the work of the control volume. Then I have my U values, my kinetic energy, my potential energy, and I also have this flow work PV that I've included in there as well. So I've got this extra term, this PV term, and that's just from the fact that there has there's some work due to the fact that I've got flow going on here, right? Now, if you remember, we talked about enthalpy, right? And we just kind of said, hey, by definition, enthalpy is U plus PV. We'll talk about why it's important later. This is why it's important because I don't want to have to look up U, pressure, and volume and then do a calculation. I just want to look up H directly. So that's really where enthalpy comes from. It just makes our calculation easier. Okay? It doesn't have a huge physical meaning that you're going to be able to point at and say, oh, look at that enthalpy going on there. Again, it's a combination of variables that makes our life easier to do our energy balance, to make the first law work out. Okay, So rather than spending a lot of your energy trying to figure out exactly what the physical definition of enthalpy is, just know that if I've got fluid flow, I look up H rather than looking up U. And H is nothing more than a collection of U plus PV. So rather than calculating it, it's just tabulated to make our life easier. And we give it the arbitrary name enthalpy, which has physical meaning that is not important. What's important is that this first law energy balance is used and that we use enthalpy because we've got this flow work for flowing um, control volume. Okay. Now, in our problems, we're dealing with steady state. Once this thing wraps up and uh, ramps up to steady state, properties are not changing. Therefore, the change in energy does not change as a function of time. So the left side of the equation goes to zero. And basically, what I have is heat minus work plus energy in minus energy out. And that energy includes you know, uh, energy, flow work, kinetic energy, uh, potential energy, although a lot of these are oftentimes neglected. Main thing to remember is with a control volume, when I have flow, I need to look up H values, not U values when looking in tables. Okay. Now, for a lot of our systems, we have one inlet, one outlet. I can rewrite that. So rather than the sum of everything coming in minus the sum of everything going out, it's basically, you know, inlet minus outlet. 
you know, one minus two is basically what I have here. Okay. And for a lot of our devices, that's what we have. Probably 85% of the devices we use one thing coming in, one thing going out. Now, talk about these devices. I'm going to step through them, talk a little bit about each one. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a nozzle or a diffuser. So a nozzle basically increases the velocity, a diffuser decreases the velocity. Okay. So really there's no work here. There's no heat loss to the surroundings or heat gain from the surrounding. All that's really happening is I'm changing my kinetic energy. Okay. So basically knowing the properties on both sides, I can calculate the enthalpy. And then from that, that change in enthalpy is essentially equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is again, V squared over two. Okay. So that's how you deal with a nozzle or a diffuser. Generally, no work or heat transfer. It's just delta H equals delta Ke. Okay, most of the other things, Ke is ignored, just like Pe is ignored. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is a turbine. Okay, and the point of a turbine is you put in high energy fluid and get that energy out into the form of, you know, spinning a blade. Okay. Um, Generally, unless it states otherwise, turbines are adiabatic, so there's no heat loss. That goes away. Again, kinetic and potential energies are minuscule with compared to my change in enthalpy. So really just the work of a turbine, assuming it's adiabatic turbine, which is most turbines we're going to deal with, really just the work of the turbine is just the change in enthalpy. So again, looking up the enthalpy, I can get the work just by the difference between the enthalpy. The opposite of a turbine is either a compressor or a pump, where I'm putting work into the system, okay, in order to get an increase in pressure, okay? So again, we typically assume these are adiabatic. Kinetic and potential energy are much smaller as compared to the change in enthalpy. So really, that work that you're putting in is just the change in enthalpy. So again, finding that enthalpy gives us the work, either the work out of a turbine or the work into a compressor or pump. Okay. Now, the other main thing that we have is a heat exchanger. Okay. And what a heat exchanger is, basically, you've got two or more streams of fluid. They have some sort of interaction where the heat between them is exchanged. Okay. So, basically, what you have is um, you have any heat loss to the surroundings, which oftentimes is zero if you've got, you know, just the streams interacting, but then basically the enthalpy in minus the enthalpy out. And again, if the container, if the control volume is insulated and it's just the interaction between the, the streams, right? So for example, this one here on the left, I've got two streams coming in, they mix and one goes out. Q is zero to the surroundings. The only interaction is the enthalpy in basically equals the enthalpy out, okay? So a lot of it is just how you're defining your system as to whether or not there's a, 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 a Q to the surroundings or not, okay? But essentially it's just, you know, enthalpy in minus enthalpy out equals the, the heat, okay? The last one we want to talk about is a throttling device, and this basically reduces the pressure. But the nice thing about a throttling device is that's really all that happens. There's no heat loss. There's no work being done. Right? There's minimal change in kinetic potential energy. Basically, the enthalpy is constant across this. It just reduces the pressure. The thing is, is you, you, know, you don't get anything from it. It just reduces the pressure for you. Oftentimes, you'll see these in um, refrigeration cycles. And we'll talk more about that as we get to refrigeration cycles. Uh, but these are the main control volumes, the main devices that, that we use and how you calculate you know, the different aspects of those devices are given, uh, you know, in this slide.